Okay, we've got, so we've got audio here um, and we're past our seven o'clock, so we, we can get going. Um, we don't have you remote folks up on the screen, but we have you via audio. Um, just want to confirm, I heard Sharon confirm, we can hear Sharon. Jill, are you there? I am, good evening. All right. Yeah. So we do we do have quorum. Um, Mather is is supposed to join us. I think he was going to come in person, um, so he must be running late. But on our agenda tonight, uh, so um, let's, we can start our meeting, October third meeting of the warrant committee. Um, we have a published agenda that's got three items. Do I need to do any virtual intro or anything? Uh, no, but you will do have to do roll call votes. Roll call votes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, anyway, we have a published agenda uh, that was published last week. We've got three items on our agenda. Uh, the first being a discussion uh, about a potential recommendation of a warrant committee member to be appointed to the, the new school building committee. And we have an update from the town administrator on certain sort of a, a general calendar update as far as the budget cycle for FY24. And then we do have some meeting minutes to approve um, that uh, were sent around a little bit earlier. Um, so um, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so if uh, committee members have been following along, um, they since the town the last town meeting um, and the, the new uh, school committee school building committee bylaw, um, the process to form a new school building committee um, has started with the select board um, at the request of the school committee. There has been some some meetings of the school committee to and, and others to talk about is a, a general application process for folks that may want to be on the school building committee. Um, and there, there's some information was just posted to the town's website today. Is like actually a Google form for anyone interested, and you want you could shed some on around to people that they may be interested to be uh, on the school building committee to fill out uh, an online application using a Google form um, for consideration to be appointed uh, by the various appointing members, whether it be um, that the moderator, select board, or the school committee. All of the applications uh, would would come in to a central location to be considered in that pool, um, but that's outside of the Warren Committee's jurisdiction. We we have uh, one representative uh, or that we would recommend for appointment, so it would be up to us to determine who we would recommend for that appointment to the school building committee. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's one of the get on our on our agenda this evening is to discuss if there's anybody interested and you know what are the feelings of the, the warrant committee for a possible recommendation for appointment. Um, I've reached out to you all and had some conversations verbally with some of you about interest or, or not and the challenges that you're facing. Um, but. Um, you know, I just wanted to make sure we had a the opportunity to have this conversation. Relatedly, um, the Attorney General's office just gave a second extension of the review of the school building committee bylaw. If you're not aware, the Attorney General's office, the Commonwealth, has to review bylaws of various municipalities that are approved, and they have to review and approve them. And that process is taking some time, um, a little longer than normal. The review now is this. I think they mentioned November 16th. November 16th. They would have that completed. So, so technically, there there isn't a bylaw yet until the attorney general's office approves it. But um, there's no sense in delaying um, in a conversation, and you know we don't necessarily need to take any action tonight. But um, wanted to, to to open the conversation. So, um, kind of sort of I'll go to the floor and let anybody else kind of chime in is on their thoughts, if there's any anybody's interest um, that's changed since I've talked to them and emailed, um, you know, please welcome, chime in. If anybody has any thoughts about, you know, how we might, you know, structure it to make it easier for folks, you know, certainly whoever's appointed, the nature of the, the bylaw makes them, you know, the, the, the one voting member, we can't 
alternate that without a formal change through appointment. Um, but, you know, we, we certainly could, somebody doesn't need to, to be too worried about committing for a full five years. And if somebody wanted to come in for the earlier duration and then found it was either too much or, you know, they, they, their skill set kind of wasn't what was needed in the school building committee, they could certainly come back to the, the Warren Committee and request somebody else be, you know, appointed in their stead. So, you know, nothing is forever. Well, <laughs> I think, have to be I for think the it was term. discussed and, and, you know, Steve mentioned um, that, uh, you know, the skill set that, that might be beneficial at the front end of the process, given it's probably going to be a five-year process, may be different mm -hmm. and, and likely to be different than the skill set that could be you know, utilized at the end. So it might be building in some anticipated flexibility. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that uh, particularly when you get into, you know, um, that third, third, uh, third, fourth, fifth year where it's actually a lot of, you know, a lot of detailed design and decisions around details of construction and stuff like that. That certainly is a different skill set than maybe what you need in the first couple of years, right? So it could be a natural sort of transition there for somebody. Welcome, Heather. How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Oh, hey. what's, what's his or her name? Scott, is that the Lewis member? Warren Committee. This is Noah. He's my little late, he's my little late excuse, is what I is. <laughs> His name. Oh, his, his name. Okay. So Noah. Yep. Well, okay. Uh, well, welcome. welcome. <laughs> How old is Noah? Noah is a week to uh, a week a week old. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's really new. <laughs> yeah. Very new. <laughs> Well, it's it's, it's, ad, it's admirable that you're on this call. So. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for doing it all night, anyways. <laughs> I'm trying to reach parents of school age kids, but future <laughs> school age kids. <laughs> well, I have two, so. Oh, you're a pro. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you look well considering. So thank you. I'm very I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what time it is or what day it is. So it's all <laughs> no, we were just uh, we just started discussing just some just some various thoughts on the school building committee, um, you know, and just um, seeing if anybody you know had had any particular interest or or just had thoughts on the matter in general matter. So, uh, so we just I, started that conversation. So I I do have some thoughts. I am I am happy to join um, at some point. Um, and I think I fit the demographic for what we're looking for to be on this committee going forward. And I'm happy to do that. I just cannot do it at this moment. As if that, and I think that's, this is why, you know, that's the only, it's just the commitment of saying to my wife, Hey, I'm going to be gone a couple nights a week for Warren committee and school building committee is just kind of unreasonable at this time, but I'm happy to do it going forward. And I would like to do it going forward after the kind of the first couple months. Um, so I, I I threw my I throw my hat into the ring, but just in, at a future date, if that's possible. And and actually, you know, in the conversations that the select board and the school committee have been having, as far as sort of a timeline for an appointment of the new committee, um, it doesn't look like their decision. There's going to be some time for that process to unfold. And actually, um, there's a an application was just added to the the town's website. Um, it's not li likely that uh, the appointments are going to be made prior to this December. So it's a couple months out already. Um, you know, that may not make that much of a difference for you, Mather, but just that, that is that is part of the, you know, they're really not going to have a fully appointed committee until the end of this year. Okay, that's that's good to know. So. Jill, Sharon, Sharon, any your, your any thoughts from your experience on the the prior go round? Um, 
I, I mean, I, I guess I would say I found it to be a fairly light commitment early on. It got heavier at the end. Um, I don't personally have the bandwidth to do it right now. I think that somebody, I don't know if Jill has any interest. I think it's great that Mather has interest. I think that um, both Jill and Mather have great jobs that fit this description really well. They both are involved in those things and they're in the demographic, but not to volunteer Jill without asking her first, but um, that was my initial thought anyway, was Jill or Mather. Um, I am, I mean, I'm just in the same boat with commitment. Like, I don't know if I can do a couple nights a week with my kids being the ages that they are. That's my hesitation. We're, um, I, you know, I guess factored into this, we, we are short a couple members on the committee. So, you know, it is, it is a potential that, you know, a newer appointee to the Warren Committee might be interested. Uh, we, just, we just don't know that at this point. <laughs> so far. <laughs> And we, do, we certainly don't need to make any decision tonight in that one, you know, the, the bylaw actually isn't, you know, quote, technically approved by the attorney general levels anyway. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we definitely need to continue this conversation and, and to see, we, we will need to make a recommendation uh, for appointment. Um, I'd hate to just draw some name out of a hat and, <laughs> and give it to the, the select board or Scott, so. But I, one, one point I maybe to, and I don't think we spend a lot of time on it, but a, a bit of a conversation if it's, and maybe Sharon could add something here, is the significance of it being a voting member versus a non-voting member, I think has some implications on, you know, to the, to the overall Warren Committee, I think, not just to the person who is designated. And the reason I say that is, you know, the it does become a lot more um, active when Sharon, you know, uh, you know, passed over to me during that time. It got to the end, and it you know it didn't take up more time. However, I always viewed my role as being to keep the warrant committee informed of the progress and the issues as they came forward. Um, you know, Mike. Quinlan in order said, I don't does it, I don't differentiate between voting and non-voting, but there is a difference. And um, you know, so my I always viewed my role as the warrant committee representative to bring back to the warrant committee, you know, and keep current and keep you all current as to what the issues were so that it wouldn't just be spun upon you. And as, as issues became more important, that became more of a discussion. Mm -hmm. I think as a voting member. There is another responsibility there, I think. And I think that at least, you know, perhaps from the Warren Committee, maybe I'll have to do it tonight, but I think at some point the Warren Committee itself should have an understanding of what that different role is. Yep. I think it, it adds another layer of complexity because if, if, if you were that person representing the Warren Committee with a vote, you couldn't go forward with a vote without a full discussion with the Warren Committee. I mean, that's um, so that wouldn't have happened before. All you do is relay the information and eventually the Warren Committee would weigh in. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess that train is less at the station. I guess we have to be a voting member, but um, you knew I was against that in the first place. Uh, and I still think it just adds another layer of complexity that was not necessary. And I think it's um, it's going to be difficult for whoever. Yeah, was and, and in practicality, depending on the frequency of votes and the, the, the need for the votes, there may not be that opportunity to have, you know, get a prior screen that's the from the Warren Committee. And that it's just, that's the, the reality of it. Yeah. So they'll, I mean, maybe they're, you know, to, to help with that, to have, you know, some, some healthy discussion about general feelings of the Warren Committee and, um, you know, to help sort of inform whoever that representatives is um, to the, the building committee um, so that they go into it with some some understanding of thoughts from various warring committee members mm -hmm. so that if they need to take votes on the fly they can have that to kind of in their background to consider 
because you know they're, they're not going to have the opportunity to screen every vote prior to, to to the vote for the board committee so um i think it's just incumbent upon us to have some, some more discussions up front absolutely absolutely i, I can envision there'll be certain decisions that the representative can make because they're pretty Might straight procedural pretty state procedural you know straightforward but if that person doesn't have the time to weigh in on a or some meaty subject hasn't got time to come back to this group and discuss it, then I think that's a real problem. Yep. And that, uh, I don't know how we can jump that hurdle unless the person says, I'm not going to vote at this time, I'll vote at the next meeting. Yeah. And, 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 delay, and just... delay the process, which is, of course, well, I, but I, think, I, th I think, Ed, what you're saying is something that is why I believe we should be addressing it as a committee, because I think once that, we should have some procedural discussion internally that says what in what in what situation does the warrant committee member need to defer the decision back to the committee the warrant committee you know, i mean there'll be certain and maybe set that up up front you know i mean establish some guardrails for that for that you know for that in, in certain circumstances if it comes down to you know us and such we as a warrant committee. I mean, in some sense, we're not too different from all the other committees who have representatives on the school building committee. They, they, the planning, planning board, the school committee, I assume would have a similar, mm -hmm. similar challenge of educating their broader committee. Yeah, but the, the position of the warrant committee to take a position you know, on any on an article or the position, I, I think it's I think the voice of the Warren Committee. And I, I, I think like the, the, Scott to make a comment on that, but yeah. I think the voice of the Warren Committee member, you know, takes on a different level. Yeah, right. be, it'd be as if right. the, you know, like a select person. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's different. I, Once I think the article respect. gets gets here. Well, yeah, but even even as you you know pushing it forward yeah. or you know show, I mean, we get biases, all these different things that come up in the past that. I think the Warren Committee position is should be is more sensitive to it personally. I agree with all that. I think one thing that's that's not there is that it's that the person is a representative of the of the committee. Uh, so that the, the person would be selected by the committee to serve. And I think there would be situations where there might be even some recusal back and forth with the, with the committee on terms of, of that. Unless there was going to be a change, but I don't know that in terms of that that selection by the committee and that are appointed by the moderator uh, is going to during the process is going to be required to come back to the Warren Committee to be able to. Uh, it's not just to come in because it's that particular issue happens to be six to three in the you know in the Warren Committee or six to two if that person were to accuse themselves that they would be obliged to then go and vote uh, that you know that position. So that's. Now again, this is all this is all a function of the bylaw that's being reviewed and that came together in this, you know, in the springtime pretty quickly. And so I buy everything people have said about it. It's, you know, it's 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 not all of these things that are protocols and, and things in the background are gonna, gonna have to be worked out. But I think it's I think by design the committee said, you know, after the, all the good work of the Warren Committee over that they wanted to get somebody from the you know the from the Warren Committee, uh, you know, who would who would you know be a voice. Mm -hmm. And to Bob's point, to be a voice as a voting member. Mm -hmm. So, well, how, I mean, one of the things that you suggested was that um, whoever's on this committee not partake in the deliberations of the article. So that if, if there's nine of us, there'd only be eight people who would deliberate. On yeah, the and that would certainly. Have... How do you deal with that if yeah. if you're get, constantly getting input along the way? Um, is, isn't that considered deliberations? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's sort of like, yeah, yeah. I'm not following this, Steve. Well, he, his suggestion was to to sort of to to allow this individual to sort of be on the committee and vote and stuff like that. But that when it came time for this committee oh, to oh, deal with the article, I see that person would would not participate in the deliberations on the article. They they would sort of you know they would participate in all the SBC votes, but once it got to the committee for our own deliberations, 
Um, and I just wonder how you separate that if, if it goes on for five years and we're constantly, you know, talking about it. And, right. If you constantly have some yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which I think becomes difficult. I think as a practical matter, that's going to happen. Yeah. I can't imagine that one person is going to be here for the next five years to be yeah, 80 right. years old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and the needs of the building committee may change. And some of you different skills. Come on, you're there. doing fine. Uh, that's a building one. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're making it out of bricks. You're not going to get out that easy. <laughs> nice try, though. Yeah. Thank you. Well, again, I mean, it, it just, it, it, I think it requires further consideration because it, it, it's, 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 it's tricky in that sense. And I, I've, I've always viewed the, you know, the Warren Committee in a kind of quasi audit role, you know, in terms of, of just, you know, and, and as, as I said, the non voting member was just to make sure that the issues that are going to, that are kind of come forward are being addressed and, and, that the, and that the information is being circulated to the overall group, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, this, speaking to the auditor, you know, to have the vote and the audit, you know, is a kind of a delicate separation of yeah. church and state, as it were. You know, I've learned that to have the moderator be an appointing authority has some of those, you know, opportunities for the unique get a little bit more into kind of issues and you know I'm trying to walk this without having it be something that disqualifies my the, the sense of objectivity you know, around you know the appointment. Mm -hmm. I think we have to bind around the fact that everybody just wants to build a great school. <laughs> You're focused on you know on that. Yeah. Well I mean all these conversations are definitely important. I hope hopefully it doesn't discourage anybody from stepping forward if they're interested because I think I think I'm optimistic that we can work through all of this and you know it'll be a little learning process but yeah um i think just with some good open dialogue you know i think i think we can work with this i think it's great that Mather is interested yeah. because yeah. i think that's the i agree that's the demographic that's perfect for this community yeah you know? yeah just depending on timing you know yeah. so I think it might work out <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so with <laughs> when so let's see so the, the deadline for general applications to the school building committee is October 18th we may change that that we put uh we set that date before we receive the notice from the attorney general okay. today so that may get extended so, so that was the assumption that uh we that, that we would have heard by today right <laughs> yeah. so so just I'm just trying to question. frame that by way of, you know, our, our recommendation, you know, when do we need to have some sort of recommendation out of this committee for, for a member? Um, I would think that that would come at the, at the point of appointment. So after the people have, you know, you, you, you would be timed at, at or about the time that uh, other appointments be made. Okay. Uh, and it's clear what, what the process is, clearer what the process is for the Board of Selectmen and the school committee, they need to go through their usual open meeting kind of a process in order to be able to consider candidates who apply. You know, I've been talking to people, I've been talking to people, uh, you know, a little bit who, who I, I don't have that demand. I So I, I put in addition to the, the applicants that would apply, also requested people be in touch with me directly. Uh, relative, so I'm not sure what, you know, at what point in time, if I have you know, people who are selection make appointments, I guess I can't make appointments before the November 16th date or there's nothing to appoint to, but I have talked to people. I have, I have three appointments, two at large, and then uh, one a person over 65. So I, you know, for me, and as I put in my message, uh, you know, the opportunity for the Warren Committee, a Warren Committee member to step up and with a couple of appointments has helped to set the, you know, the tone right from the beginning, you know, this is, this is the process. But I know it's a, it's a real demand, you know, for, for somebody it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a long process, and I think. But if we can speak to it and have it be a, a, a as positive a process it could be, then that would be very helpful to anyone who serves. People collaborating, and collaborating, and, you know, using a model we've used for a long time. Yeah. So if if we, 
if we had, you know, an, another, I mean, we're going to talk about our budget schedule, you know, kind of in a high level in a sec, uh, which might help kind of frame sort of our next few months worth of work. Um, but, you know, I think we will probably need to meet again, either towards the end of the October or beginning of November and have, you know, sort of a firmer recommendation as far as an appointment from the Warren Committee on this topic. So that, you know, by the end of October, beginning of November, we need to, to be really kind of coalescing on a, on a person. And I need to begin to do your reinforcements, you know, in that, you know, that time, time frame, which are to a degree, you know, similar demographics with Amanda and Christine leaving, you know, that would be relative to this committee. Uh, would be a goal to you know to try to I always try to achieve balance and I made it uh, a point over time not to talk about what what I'm balancing you know uh, uh, there's no litmus test in terms of it specifically but again I think you know when our parents of school age children are you know and, and other folks to be represented at, at women you know uh, mm -hmm. those kinds of things you like to you like to balance I didn't realize till till after I was making appointments that what really mattered in the old days when they had the separate schools in each side of town, they almost considered it to be geographic in terms of the appointments. So Warren, the moderator would have to balance uh, appointments from one side of town or the other. Uh, because, but, you know, for the Warren could, could, could lean relative to expenditures on, you know, on the North School, the South School, or those kinds of things. It was a little, a little trickier than that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where some of you <laughs> <Yeah. out. laughs> Thanks yeah. for stepping up now. Try to you know try to particularly if there's, a, there's an issue, but for the most part to try to, to to find a you know a balance of perspectives is has been important. You know I've got the, the, the criteria you've seen in terms of the appointment for the for the warrant committee. Many of the criteria that have been established for this, when I listed those, uh, are mirroring the same thing. You know people committed to uh, uh, collaborative. Uh, deliberative kind of decision making, you know, stay committed to a process, be, be able to subordinate their own self-interest to a group to try to make, you know, the best decision of, you know, of the group, those, those kinds of things, plus also bringing some of the, the right kinds of skill sets or expertise or insights so that together with the appointments that are going to be made by the school committee, the selectmen, we're going to get, you know, we're going to get a, a group that's very knowledgeable, but, but also balanced in terms of, uh, how they might think of building a school, or how they might think of construction generally, or how they just think of representing, you know, the, the taxpayers and the citizens and their friends and the neighbors. Those are all those are all functions. Yeah. So I would say, Jeremy, your timetable is. I, you know, we could talk about it because I, mean, I only heard today about the about the delay with the mm -hmm. review. So I assume that they would extend that a, 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 a little bit. So. We think about as that is happening, they're closing, and that's that would be you know, a great time. Okay. What is the attorney general looking for when he looks at that bylaw? What are, what, why would why would they reject it for any reason? Are they, it's it's rare that they, they reject things. At? You know, it's it's a requirement that they do it. It's rare they reject things, but I mean, they're looking at a whole host of things. You know, Constitution. Yeah. And I have a guess. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> I'm going to guess that there may be certain things that I might have said in a meeting in that um, maybe the age 65 could be age discrimination. I'm just tossing it out there. I think that there's some, I wouldn't be surprised. And then I'm going to be allowed to say, I told you so. <laughs> well, I guess you've really you may know more tomorrow when we get an update from the yeah, attorney general's office yeah. i mean it, it could be just a workload thing they might be just back backlog well, we have, um, we, or it might be substantive but we'll, and, and we, we, all, find we, out all, we all had that question but well, yeah, town council you know yeah. we put it to town council yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we, there is a comment or suggestion. We asked, we asked them numerous as times. Yeah. I watched the television, yeah. but as long as it wasn't prohibitive. He, wasn't his view was that it was not, uh, it was not discriminatory because it was inclusive. inclusive. We were not excluding right. people. Right. And that's how he got comfortable with it. Yeah. So, uh, we'll see soon. Yeah. Um, uh, there is a comment. Um, online, a suggestion from one of the attendees about um, this from Chris McHugh Potts. Wasn't planning on co to comment, but just wanted to throw out the idea of a warrant committee subcommittee as allowed 
so that the designated SBC representative has one or more other members to rely on as a sounding board. And, you know, I, th I think that's a good suggestion. Probably, you know, that representative would have some sort of backup, but um, thank you for that, that idea. I don't think it replaces the full voting member. I mean, I think it's just a subcommittee as, but so, so. It, it doesn't, Whoever's appointed as the voting member is the voting member that can't change. So the one person doesn't want to get too involved with it, they get three more people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, it's a, it, the idea of a subcommittee is interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's I how we dealt with it. I think we are a subcommittee in some yeah. space. That's, sure. right. that's how we dealt with the due diligence that we did on the, right. the article, you know, back in November. We had a subcommittee. So. Right. Just that, that, just but that sure. I think, was to allow for quicker you know quicker uh, analysis right we had a yeah. short period of time yeah, was, yeah on a singular yeah. issue yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah. to yeah. something that's going to last for five years yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know i think we can i don't know i'm optimistic we can we'll be able to find a solution to all this and you know maybe that is one of the things that whoever steps up you know they may request certain support like a subcommittee you know, yeah we can yeah. leave that up to them a little bit too anyway um so I guess, unless there's anything more to talk about on that item, um, we'll just table it for now. Um, but please you know, keep it in your thoughts. And if you have any any uh, aha moments, please reach out. Um, and if there's nothing else, we'll move on to our second item, just uh, an update on the, the coming budget cycle. Christine. I can't believe we're back here yet already. Uh, this is just an updated copy and I will, um, as soon as this is over, I will email it to everybody who's not here in person tonight. I apologize for not doing that ahead of time. This is the general fund financial forecast um, for the next three years. Um, so I think this is, as we talked last year, and I know, you know we had talked prior to COVID um, that we would start our budget process looking at our financial forecast. Um, and we wanted to start that in the fall. Uh, the school committee, um, uh, I don't know if the school committee has seen this yet. I will send this uh, to them directly, but I know that Dr. Marsden and Michael Law Francesca helped Nick put this together before he left. So they have seen it and they have participated in the budget side of it. Um, so this is just for your review. Uh, we can talk about it at a future meeting. In terms of calendar, as you know, um, we are a little behind schedule with Nick leaving uh, last month. So I am hoping I will finish up um, meeting with my department heads uh, in October to review their budget. They're just starting to put those together now. Uh, they just finished capital and we'll be having a capital budget meeting shortly. Um, I am anticipating having an assistant town administrator uh, on staff by the end of October. And we have a draft budget um, to you by the end of November. And then I believe in December, we can start having our meetings and move forward on it um, a little sooner than we did last year. I'm going to really hold everybody to the warrant report deadlines this year. Um, and we're going to actually have them. We're going to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have them and we're going to meet them. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, that does not include the you have the US side, the town side, now, about the schools. When you, you said by the end of November, having a draft that's that's that'll just, just be the, the that's town. just the town side the yeah town. we'll carry the estimates that the schools have given us uh in the financial forecast i can see that this is looking the way i thought it would look as you go out five years yes yeah yes yeah in okay. fact i'm surprised it's not worse but why wait what is well i i just know when you go out five years and you just do the typical projections that we would go into a deficit um fairly quickly and uh, it starts in 24, and you can see it just continues to build. To go oh, to yeah, page, page. page six, the bottom line. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm not going to go on the first pass of this myself. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is a good wake up call, though, because when you look at when you go out five years and you see that if, if these numbers are probably pretty reasonable, mm -hmm. I'm sure for reasonable for revenue or reasonable for what you've experienced in expense. Over the years, and it shows you, you know, the, the difficulty we're going to have going forward to balance the budget. I mean, we had a reprieve this past year with all of federal funds, and we got we got lucky in a, in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. 
but it just points to how difficult it's going to be in the future years. Yeah, and uh, I think you know, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to you know, keep, I assume all the departments had input to this and they'll, they'll sort of, you know, as they go through the, the, the near term budget, they'll have some tweaks or views on what these outer years look like. Um, but that um, I know there's certain collective bargaining things that have been decided mm -hmm. and negotiated and, and you know they're reflected right, in here. They're reflected in here, right? So that's part of the challenge is that it's, you know it's, these, it's, these are long term commitments that absolutely that uh, we're making and negotiating that um, you know there's not a lot of wiggle room to, to deal with. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Well, Christine, can you do, because it's a public meeting and I don't want to get everybody's hair on fire, can you just kind of characterize what it is you're presenting here? Because in terms of, um, yeah, it, I mean, every budget starts with a deficit. Okay, so first of all, so we, we so every year, year so well, so, yeah. <laughs> well, no, every year that I've been on the yeah. warrant committee, we start with the deficit. So, so this, this, from my understanding, this is a five-year financial forecast. So right. there's some assumptions built right. into this, right. well, that's but exactly it's a great planning asking. tool. I'm asking her to explain that. Yeah. Okay. So it's a it's a very conservative look at what we anticipate for revenue, and it's a very conservative look at what we expect for our expenditures going out the next five years. And the reason we have tried um, and worked so hard to get this put together is that we want everybody to understand the decisions that we're making now impact us down the road. Um, and there are assumptions, and I will um, I will have a, a presentation for you at the next meeting that talks about what our assumptions are in here. Uh, on the flip side of the collective bargaining agreements included in here, it does not include the collective bargaining agreement that we're currently working on in the police department. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, because we're in active negotiations, we could not include anything um, mm -hmm. in here for that. So there are some assumptions I'll need to, to list out for you as you're going through this to yeah. review. Yeah, that'll be important. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, 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 again, I, I want to make sure we're clear that this this is not this is not a budget. <laughs> this, this is, is not. A budget. This is a no. view into the future. All right, yes. with the. What's known right now, mm -hmm. conservatively presented on both revenue and expenses, but it gives the projection as Ed is characterized that there's no there's no magic bullet out here that's yeah. going to solve the the trend yeah. that right. we have that we have in, have right. engaged with for the last five years, which yeah. is we have a spending revenue issue mm -hmm. and. It's not going away. I think it's best to look at this as this is if things stay exactly the same and continue to grow the way they have been. Right. Um, versus an actual budget. I don't want anybody to see this and just assume that that delta between the revenue and expenditures is what we're anticipating for this year. We haven't gotten that that far right. yet. Right. Um, this also predicts that there is no growth in staffing that we see right. status quo. So it is very conservative. Um, in those terms, yeah. yeah. And I think it's helpful because it lays the groundwork for what we think is going to happen. Absolutely. Uh, and oh, that's great. And I think it can, you know, also lay the groundwork for some discussions about priorities and, you know, uh, expectations. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it helps you make really great tool for this. It helps you make long range decisions. Yeah. But you know, you can look at this and you can say, well, we know it's a conservative, you know, revenue forecast. But there's not going to be enough incremental revenue over and above that conservative amount to offset that variance. On the expense side, it's conservative, but there's not going to be enough expense savings to reduce that deficit either. Not even the combination of the two mm -hmm. will, will uh, eliminate those I think, right. with collective bargaining agreements just going forward. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's really, it's uh, a. Yeah. Well, this is great. Yeah. Yes, Jill. I mean, uh, Christine, I was just going to say it'll be really helpful to walk through the assumptions um, on the model so we can kind of understand. When I, send this out to you, uh, yep, when I send this out to you, I'll send you some of our some of our basic uh, assumptions when we put it together. Um, okay, not great. to get in the weeds tonight per se, but one of the, the big revenue expense pictures is the state hospital redevelopment correct and that is not included in that's it. not included in these assumptions oh, okay right nope. okay so that that's okay 
because we, we have it closed on that property and we're still working towards it, we didn't feel comfortable anticipating that as a source of revenue uh, in our expenditure. Okay. Yeah, we'd love to spend some time next meeting to walk through those assumptions so we, yeah, have a good picture. That's great. This is really helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, at least we know where the rattlesnakes are now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> did you remember when we did the, uh, wasn't the pro forma the incremental uh, revenue from the uh, from state hospital was like uh, 750? Around that, yeah. 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 But, and so we closed on that property. Net, I don't want to. Yeah, it was like a million and a half of the, the revenue, and then offset was a net of about 750. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. still. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's so I'm hoping that um, by mid December we should at least have a first pass uh, of the budget to you. Yeah. Um, obviously, when we start at this early, that we are also making switching to the budget side, we are making a lot of assumptions, um, and we won't have a lot of yeah. costs until the January and usually end of February timeline. But yeah, um, we are trying to get as many factors uh, as possible. Keep in mind that that state hospital doesn't kick isn't going to kick in until that's probably true. FY twenty seven. Right. Is it there? Right. Far right. So, so, yeah. you're, you're, so you're, you're right. It's not going to be helpful. <laughs> so not, not on this. No. Right. We've got some some near term nearer term decisions to make. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it, it's been said a couple of times, but I want to just kind of reiterate what I'm saying is that this is huge progress, uh, and it's, and the fact that you were able to present this for us in the town. Is 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 really important and really a, a great step on your part. To, to, we talk about transparency. The numbers are here. It's all, it's relative. It's you know there's there are assumptions to be made in it, but it it does give a picture of reality. Yeah. That that gets us to a conversation, and that it, and it goes beyond just let's take care of twelve months and then we'll worry about twelve months later. So okay. to your credit, I want to make sure that. that uh, that's yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. It's a good, it's a yeah. good first step, and it's the first step we've talked about halfway through the budget cycle the last two years. It's nice <laughs> to actually do it wonderful, uh, before wonderful. we get started. So. And you know, this was I, I love what you've done. <laughs> one of the things I, I pushed for. So it was great. So I get related to budget. If if folks have any particular preference on any particular department budgets to review, uh, feel free to reach out. Some folks have. Um, so just if you do have preference at some point we'll need to make some assignments for for departments for you guys to review so uh, keep that in your in your mind going forward um i have some thoughts but want to make sure everybody's interested in um you know in, in the departments they're looking at um i guess the other part as well is is the capital budget um and that's got you know similarly you know there's a good you know, multi multi year plan in place for capital. Um, you know, there, there's opportunity always every year to, to kind of make adjustments as needed and so forth. But um, you know that that's part of of the schedule as well. So, um, in any, I don't anticipate any issues yeah. uh, this year for that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, the only I, I will say the only addition that we'll have for the fiscal year twenty four. Is the that was not included? Um, I don't think we had it listed last year because we weren't sure of the funding source. Was the Council on Aging Garage? Mm. And now that we've closed on the Hinkley South property, mm. um, there will be funding available. Um, it was negotiated as part of this uh, project. That's the only that's the only large addition to the fiscal year twenty four. So there was mitigation funds, or I don't know what you called them. Yeah, some other source of funds so if you recall in order to make the project work we had to secure a piece of property that's under the care custody and control of the council on aging uh, in order to do that they asked that we um, discuss building a garage um, and we negotiated the sale price at Hinkley south to include funds to build that garage okay. great sounds good um well kudos again to you and the finance team for doing this it's, it's been a lot of work and i will <coughs> tell you um nick really helped uh get everybody on the same page and working on this so yeah and i wouldn't let him leave till he finished it so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
anybody have any other more questions on that? Um, we'll, you know, again, in a future meeting, we'll have a, you know, more, we can dive in a little bit deeper on the assumptions and so forth, but um, also allow Christine to staff back up again, get some support. Yeah, well, it'll be a little easier <laughs> to walk through this one for, for full staff again. Um, if nobody has any questions on that, um, we have some meeting minutes to Can approve. Be, uh, Thank actually, you, Mather. Sorry, I just have one question yeah. on the, um, the bigger document on um, the GFOA budget. GFAO budget. Yeah. Yep. So I just submitted uh, to the Collins Center my final edits today. Okay. Uh, and we have an October 30th deadline to submit it to GFOA. So we are okay. anticipating it'll be the second or third week. So maybe the next time in November. We'll we should have the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. Good. Good. Yep. And as soon as they finalize and we submit, uh, I'll be able to post it and uh, we can release it. Okay. Is that the big the write up? The yeah. 80 page document? 248 pages. 248. And we've only read through 80. <laughs> 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 that might have been the executive summary. <laughs> yeah, that's big There's yeah. something wrong with an 80 page executive summary. <laughs> Yeah, so we're very, uh, I've, I've seen a, a closer to final draft and it's uh, really exciting. So Good. looking forward to it. Again, adding to the transparency and, and information available. Thank you. Uh, so Mather did uh, complete some meeting minutes for one of our meetings from this past spring. Was it the June? What were the meeting minutes, Mather? June 2nd? June 6th or something. June 6th. Yeah. June 6th. We've got draft meeting minutes from our meeting on June 6th. Um, meeting minutes and the associated documents that were discussed. Anybody have any comments? I looked at it and I, I had some very, very minor editorial, you know, tweaks. Nothing at all substantive that I gave in the Google Doc to back to now. I don't I don't. I'm I'm fine with them, other than those little minor things. Yeah. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve the minutes of June sixth, two thousand twenty-two, as submitted. Any second. There's a second. Um, we need to do a roll call vote. Um, Ed. Yes. Yes. Steve. I'm a yes. Yes. Mather. No. Uh, <laughs> Matt, are you still with us? He may have Mather dropped. Yeah, he may have dropped. Okay. Uh, Jill. Yes. Aaron. Yes. So we've, we've got a plurality. Yeah, it looks like he's gone. I think yeah. we lost. That's right. All those in favor? Um, so that's that's the last item on our official agenda. Any any last minute updates or any requests for future meetings? Oh, all right. Um, we have attendees. You know, I would say as a public me that I continue to be on the quest to you know bring the reinforcements to the warrant committee as well as make the appointments you know for the school building committee. So um, I had a. a we had a sequence of open meetings. I talked to a, you know a lot of people, got a lot of insight. Didn't you know wasn't anyone voluntary? Uh, we had a couple of conversations. So you know, as like I said, I really like to get focused so that when we get to that next meeting that you have with the early November period, you have at least another couple of people here so that you could you know get them integrated with what you do. It's late in the season, but you know. okay. Good. You're great. Thank you. Oh, we're all set. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Yes. Roll call. <laughs> and is a yes, Steve. Yes. I'm a yes. Yes. Bob's a yes. Jill. Yes. Sharon. Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good to see you all. Thank you, you all. Hope to Take see care. you next time.